I got a long way to go, but I gotta rest a bit. I'm gonna go over here and get some water at the pump. You had some of the water at the pump? Oop! It's so cold, it's gonna be so good on a day like today. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Prudence. Prudence Armor, but they call me Prissy. That's a story within itself. But first, I gotta get me a little bit of water. You gotta put your back to it because it's coming from deep down in the ground and it starts to flowing. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. You really should have some. Mighty hot today. Well, like I was saying, because I like to talk and I got a little time on my hands, my name is Prudence Armour, also known as Pressy. I work in Cape May in the, in the summertime, and in the wintertime, I live up in Seaville, up in what's called Upper Township, Cape May County. Y'all looking at me kind of strange. Don't think you're from here, do you? Okay, I'm gonna sit down, take some of my weight off my, my feet. I done half walked and half waited from Cape Island to this place called the Cold Spring on account of the cold water. That's works, that's what it is, cold water. Anyway, I'm on my way to meet my, with my aunt, Lavinia Coachman. Lavinia Armour Coachman, she's related to me. We're gonna get in Mr. Ed Turner's wagon and he's gonna carry us on up to Goshen. That's where I stay when I'm working at the island, if I don't have to stay on the island, if you understand what I mean. What do I do? Well, first of all, let me tell you, I am free. Never was a slave. I got the paper to prove it. I really do. I was raised by a Quaker family up in Seaville. My missus taught me how to read and write. And I got me a job on Cake Island at one of the hotels, handling what they call the books and writing personal letters for folks. Well, I can read and write better than most white people around here. But just in case, I carry my papers with me and my missus gave me some jewelry here because she said they would know that no slave would have these and they better not take them off because she gave them to me. But if something happens to me, she said, I got something I can sell just in case somebody wants to take me back. The place I've never come from, because I ain't never been a slave, I think I'd be a little bit difficult. <laughs> you know my Aunt Lavinia? Lavinia, I'm a coachman. You never heard of her? <laughs> she was born, so my missus tells me, back in a time when this place had red coats running all around. Can you imagine a bunch of white men in red coats? My missus said they came from way far away across the big ocean. Not as far as my people come from, but far enough to here to cause us some problems. Well, that was when my Aunt Lavinia was born. This was just owned by men in red coats. Red coats. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that. Anyway, the year came around to about 1804. Never was a lot of color people around here. Most were slaves. But anyway, because of the Quaker influence, they're very good people, I tell you. They decided people shouldn't own other people. Makes sense to me. Anyway, starting in 1804, Cape May County, that's what this place is called, this big piece of land, began to free its slaves. Well, not quite free. You had to be 21 if you was a woman. That's how my Aunt Lavinia got freed so early because she was past 21 when 1904 came. 
And to be a free man, you had to be age 25. So it took a while for some people to get free, but eventually there were no more slaves around here unless you wanted to be a slave. Once all the slaves were free, there was no place for people to go but to what they call the alms house. We call it the poor house. And there was poor white folks in there and there was a lot of poor slaves. But the slaves that were poor were also old and sickly. So they couldn't get a job if they wanted to. So the good people around here took up a collection to take care of all the people in the alms house. <laughs> Boy, the stories I can tell you. You sure you don't know my Aunt Lavinia? Well, let me tell you. She was owned by a Mr. John Hand, who had a daughter named Deborah. Well, people here that were slaves weren't slaves like I hear they are further down south, wherever that is. I ain't never been too far out of this place here. See, they had only one or two slaves here, where they tell me wherever the south is, they may have 20, 30, 50 slaves. And they all kind of lived in shacks. Well, the people that were slaves here, really, most of them, my missus says, lived in the same house with their master and their missus. Maybe in the kitchen, but in the house. That was kind of good, I think. Well, my Aunt Lavinia got freed early, but she stayed on to work in the Han family. And then there came a time when little Miss Deborah that she used to take care of, a nurse, became Miss Big Deborah. And Miss Big Deborah, she done married Mr. William Harrison, that's Garrison, Gary's son. He's the owner of the shipyard up in Goshen. So it was a good marriage. And my Aunt Lavinia went to live with her little girl who's not a, now a big married woman named Miss Deborah. She always did take care of my Aunt Lavinia. And my Aunt Lavinia takes care of other people, even though she's an old lady now. Okay, I'm gonna take a swig of water here. Tell you a little bit about my Aunt Lavinia. You sure you don't know her? Okay. Well, anyway, she makes what's called purge beer and she makes little cakes. And she takes them to the shipyard or to any other party or whatever's happening in Cape Mesa. She can make some money on the side. That purge beer has saved a many a person. Have you ever been on a picnic and you pick more than you needed to eat and your belly gets all swollen and your head starts to spin? Then you go find my Aunt Lavinia and you have some of her purge beer. <laughs> it clears out anything that's in your body that you want removed. At both ends, I tell you. She's famous for her purge beer and it works fast, too. She's also the medicine lady around here because we don't have no doctors around here for anybody. Ah, there's a good remedy or two. Let me tell you about them. The first one is, well, you ever get those little bumps on your feet because your shoes have been worn by two other people before you? And you don't have the same foot size, you get those little bumps on your toes. Well, you seek out my Aunt Lavinia, and she takes some great Bible leaves and some seagrass from around here, and she pounds it and pounds it until it becomes mush. You put that mush all over them corns, and you wrap a little piece of cotton on it or put a sock on it. And I guarantee you, inside of seven days, them little bumps gonna fall off and they're gonna be in your sock or in the cloth that you wrapped it in. That's a true story. Something else.
else we all know about? My aunt can take care of what's called a sunburn. You know how when you, you white folks, you work out in the sun a lot, you get really, really red? You're going to look for my aunt Lavinia. She makes a herb tea. You drink a little bit of the herb and you take your handkerchief and you put a little bit of it in the tea and put the tea around your neck. And it takes all that burn away. Works for the color folks too, because sometimes we be out in the sun too long. Everybody likes my Aunt Lavinia. I heard they were real happy when she got married. Long time ago. She married a man by the name of Bill Coachman. He worked up at the shipyard in Goshen for Mr. Garrison. They said he was a mighty handsome man with them big muscles, nice smile, pearly teeth. All the color women loved him, but he liked my Aunt Lavinia. Well, they got married, and then she found out he liked her, well, yeah, a little too much. Had to keep an eye on him. Well, I believe the year was 1816. <laughs> we had a storm around here. You wouldn't believe. The wind howled and the snow came down and ice, ice came down from the sky. And nobody went outside. Too cold. Well, my Aunt Lavinia's Dearly beloved, didn't have nothing else to do. So he helped himself to some of her beer that she kept in kegs. Well, he drank all morning. He drank all afternoon. And right after supper time, he had one more drink. And then he had to go outside and relieve himself, if you know what I mean. Well, that was the last time Aunt Lavinia saw her dearly beloved. They found him the next day, propped up against a tree, <laughs> his bare cup up to God, his eyes were shut. I don't think God wanted him, and I have a feeling that's not the direction he went in, if you know what I mean. Poor Aunt Lavinia. She missed him a lot. Didn't have no kids. Guess you gotta be sober for some things. Makes sense to me. Had something really exciting happen last week down here in Cape May. You heard of Mr. Henry Clay? He's what's called a politician from a place called Washington. <laughs> Wherever that is. He's also a lawyer. And my missus say lawyers like to talk a lot, and so do politicians. Well, he was a famous person, to white folks at least. He was laying on the beach in Cape May, minding his own business. And this lady, she looks out her window and she says, Ah! Oh, there goes a famous person! It's, it's, it's... It's, you know that man, it's Clay, Henry Clay. Oh, I want me a silver nail. Come on with me, Hattie. Let's go get us something for Mr. Clay. So she went into her sewing basket and she got her sewing scissors out. She ran down the steps of the hotel and across the street and onto the beach and ran right up to Mr. Clay pulled his hair back and went snip, 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 and he went, oh, police, because we ain't got no police around here, and she and her girlfriend ran up with Mr. Henry Clay's hair. He had tell us the last time Mr. Henry Clay visited Cape May. Yeah, we do need some, some people around here to keep some people out of trouble. We had a steamboat come just last week from a place called Baltimore. Well, they had slaves on that ship that worked for other people. And the white folks were staying 
in the white hotels and the slaves were staying with some of the free blacks because we didn't have no slaves here. Well, next thing we know, about 10 o'clock at night, there was a lot of hooping and hollering and a fist fight broke out between the slaves and the white men and the free blacks. It was something else. So the good Christian men around here arrested everybody and put everybody in the church and locked the doors till there was a cool off period, they tell me. Yep, we have a lot of doings on around here. <laughs> My cousin Clem always stays in trouble. He can't help it. He's not too bright either. One day he also had some of Aunt Lavinia's purge beer. By that time, we had an outhouse. Went to the outhouse and went inside and there was a big bee's nest up in there. Well, Clem ran out of the outhouse and I don't know what he thought he was going to do. Got himself a piece of wood, put some oil on that wood, lit that thing, and it was flaming. Clem <laughs> went back into the outhouse, opened up the door, and went in with this thing he was going to burn the bees up with. Well, next thing we all knew, the stick went one way, Clem went straight ahead, and there was a whole lot of bees pointing like an arrow right on his. And he ran and he ran and he was gone for about two days. We don't know where he ran to. Well, he learned him a lesson. Gotta be nighttime to get the bees. And smoke works better than fire. Because he also managed to burn down the outhouse. Wasn't that stupid? We still have what they call sailboats that come here. Steam's a lot faster. With the sailboats, you gotta wait for the wind, but it's a lot cheaper. They come in down at the very end of Cape Island called the Point. We're claiming some of his friends, when they know there's a ship coming, go down there and offer to carry the passengers and their luggage up on the shore put them in somebody's buggy and take them on to the island to a hotel. Well, this one day, kind of rocky weather, I was taking my lunch down on the beach and I said, oh, I'm glad I'm not in that boat because it was rocking one way and rocking the other way. And then all of a sudden, he got stuck on some rocks trying to make it to the beach. But my cousin Clem said, I'm gonna make me some money today. I'm gonna make me a whole carter today. He saw this lady up on the boat. He said, Mrs. You, Mrs. The Carter, I'll bring you and your luggage on to the beach where I can put it in a wagon and get somebody to take you into Cape Bay for a carter. She looked at Clem, and she looked at the rocket of the boat, which you could feel for real now, and she said, well, okay. Well, Clem and his boys got a piece of wood, like they call it a ramp, and put it up on the side of the, the ship, and it walked up there like they knew what they were doing, except it was rocking and rolling a little bit. Clem gets on the ship. He says, now, missus, what you got to do is you got to get up on my back and hold on to me tight, okay? Put your arms around my neck and put your legs around my waist because I'm going to stand up and I'm going to have your luggage in each one of my hands. Well, she did what she was told and he slowly went to stand up. And then he went one way and he went one way. And we all said, come on, Clem, it's a carter for you. You can do this. You can do this. But he couldn't. He got halfway down the gangplank, and he dropped the lady, 
and he dropped the luggage, and his face right went right in the mud. Well, needless to say, Clem didn't get a quarter that day. Paul Clem. Take care now, y'all have a good day. Oh, stay out of the heat.